Okay, now we have to figure out how to get our entering variable x2 in the basis for our leaving variable a1. Um, you notice I circled the 3 there, that's usually called the pivot number, and the leaving row is also called the pivot row. To calculate the new values, and we're going to have to calculate new value for that pivot row uh, for x2. How we do that is similar to what we did uh, when we did uh, the mathematical method and when we were doing graphical to find the intersection of two lines. Uh, we know that the pivot number is 3, so we take the old A2, A1 row, the 1, 3, negative 1, 0, 0, 40, and we divide that by 3. And that becomes our entering variable there. Uh, you notice I have crossed out the A1 negative M. Uh, once an artificial variable leaves the basis, it was just that, an artificial variable so we could start at zero. So on the x2 axis, we must no longer be at zero, um, so we no longer need that variable in our basis. Good news is we no longer have to track it, and that's why I have that column um, X'd out here. Okay, now what I've done is I've gone and, and uh, put our entering variable X2 into a new tableau. Um, you know, I labeled it improved solution, so that just helps me keep track of which one is which. Notice I'm no longer tracking my A1 variable, artificial variable. Um, again, that uh, the subrates are just uh, the old A1 subrates divided by 3. Uh, we still have three vector rows, but notice now x2 is a vector row. So we could actually go in and, and fill out the vectors without even doing any math because we know that they're going to have to come out like this. Because um, the only variable at the intersection x2 and x2 will be 1. s2 and s2 is 1. a3 and a3 is 1. All right, let's go calculate our new S2 and our new S3, A3. To calculate the new S2 value, we take the old row value, uh, we subtract the coefficient of the subrate in the uh, pivot column, or, you know, the old where S2, X2 lined up, times the value of the new entering. Um, to give you an idea of what that looks like, I've done it out over here. Um, where I've done it, uh, uh, the book does it horizontally, I do it vertically. You could do it either way, it doesn't really matter. I find mathematics is easy for me. But you know, the old S2, so it was 4x1 plus 3x2 plus 0s1 plus 1s2 plus 0s3, and the Q was 120, so that's my old values. Um, the coefficient in the subrate was 3. The new entering x2 is down here, and we can look across, it's right there, 0 0.3, 1, 0 .3, negative 0 0.3, 0, 0.0, and 13.3, you notice right here. And that gives me the new values of 3, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 80. Um, you notice I put in red, uh, just this is a good double check, that comes out to 0. We know for S2 has to be 0 in the x2 vector uh, column. Uh, we know S2 has to be 1 in the vector column for S2. And we know A3 has to be 0 in the vector column for A3. So now we can go in and, and fill out our um, improved okay, solution. Okay, we've gone and put S2 into our improved solution. Now we do the same thing for our A3 variable. We calculate the new row values. Um, over here, you notice I've, I've filled it out. Again, um, I do it vertically. If you like doing it horizontally, have at it, but it's easier for me to do math this way. The book does it horizontally. Um, so we took the old A3 what row, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, and 20. From that, we subtracted um, the summation, of, I mean, the, uh, uh, the result of our coefficient of our subrate in the pivot column times the new entering column. Uh, but the subrate in the pivot column was zero. So zero times anything is zero, so effectively the A3 row becomes itself again. Uh, but again, notice the vectors line up. Uh, the vector for X2 is zero, the vector for S2 is zero, and the vector for A3 is one. 
So let's go fill in that. So I've gone and I've put the A3 uh, values in, and I've gone ahead and calculated my Z row. Again, Z is the summation of uh, the C in the basis times the subrate of the variable. So for example, Z of X1 is the 50 times 0.3 times 1 third, 0 times 3, negative M times 1. So that gives me, it actually comes out to 16.3. Four, five, nine, something like that. I rounded it off and called it 16.5. So it's 16.5 minus M. Um, to ca calculate my net evaluation, it's the, the constant from the variable itself. So that's 40. So I have for X1, it would be 40. So 40 minus 16.5 minus M. Um, again, a negative M plus a negative M is a positive M, so it comes out to 23.5 plus M. Um, as you can see from my shadow prices, that some of them are positive. We know, since this is a maximization problem, that if some of these numbers are positive, as some of my shadow prices, that means I can make more profit by building more. So we do not have an optimal solution, and we'll save the next uh, solution for next time. Um, just to give you an idea, I calculated the profit, which again is the summation of the uh, uh, C in the basis times Q, so C times Q, so 50 times 13, 0 times 80, negative M times 20. So we're still losing mo money, you know, we're still down $20 million or so. All right, that's it till next time.